First of all, this video is created for absolute 3D beginners. But if you want to fill some gaps in your understanding of some concepts, then that would be a great idea. Before we continue, let me talk about this character design course. You're going to learn how to design a female character in Blender from start to finish in real time. Your instructor is a 3D character artist and tutor. He's been working in the game industry since 2007. And in this Blender 3D character creation training, you're gonna go through the process of creating a stylized female character. You're gonna see face and body anatomy tips and common mistakes as well. The course will begin by making the two female heads, where you will learn about proportions, forms, shapes, anatomy, and all the foundational knowledge that you will need to design appealing characters. Next, you will go through the process of creating the hair, the torso, and the whole body. The course is jam-packed with tips, tricks, workflow improvements, and everything you will need to start your character design journey. If you are interested, you will find the necessary links in the description. The first step I need to talk about is choosing the right 3D software. Because as you know, there are a lot of them out there. We have 3D software for animation, game development, VFX, and fields such as industrial design, product design, architecture, engineering, and so on and so forth. So choosing the right one for your field is going to play a major role in your approach to 3D modeling and the understanding and the experience, also the resources and the workflow you're going to follow. The second thing I'm going to talk about when it comes to the basics of 3D modeling is knowing your subject and starting very simple. Because we have a lot of fields such as character modeling, creating environments, weapons, vehicles, and so much more. We have different things you can create as a 3D artist. So knowing what you're going to specialize in and the field you're going to go for is going to also play a major role in your approach and workflow as a 3D modeler. And this is going to be extremely important early on as a beginner. It is also going to save you a ton of time. I know some people who got really good at 3D modeling in just one or a couple of years because they were laser focused and knew their subject beforehand. So if you want to see real and quick progress, this is the point you want to focus on the most. Number three, you need to gather a lot of reference images. As an artist, especially a 3D artist, most likely you are not going to create things from your own imagination because you need some things to look at. These things are going to be images that we call reference images. For example, let's just say you want to create a car. To create this car, you need to gather reference images of that car, of that model specifically, and gather photos from different angles to have a general understanding of its topology. This is important because as you do your modeling, you're going to keep looking at it constantly to eyeball the things that you need to create while following certain things that we're going to talk about in just a couple of minutes. Using reference images is incredibly important whether you are a beginner, an intermediate, or a professional artist. And this is a very important practice that is going to follow you and you're going to keep following it for years on end because it is just super necessary to get your job done properly. Next is using blueprints. Blueprints are blue pages with white diagrams showing models and mechanical parts, maybe architectural elements with details and different angles explaining everything that you need to know. These things are extremely important if you want to create something that is complicated. Also, if you want to create something that is going to be simple to help you understand the concept and practice it early on. To be honest, when I say blueprints, it doesn't really mean blueprints in the official way. You can use images from different angles like the front, side, top, or maybe the back to help you follow the design process and make sure that the model you're creating is going to be correct from different angles and that every vertex, edge, and polygon is aligned perfectly from different angles and viewports to help you create something that looks beautiful from different viewports. And if you have noticed, all major 3D software have different viewports. And this is one of the reasons why, to help you kind of create something and while doing so, looking at it from different angles. And using blueprints in this way is going to be a very good way to create something that looks beautiful, accurate, and most importantly, something that is going to give you less headaches during the modeling process. The next point is organization. When working on 3D projects, organization is going to be very important as well. You need to keep things very clean. I mean, you need to follow a certain naming convention, like naming different parts of your model to keep track of what you are creating, especially when things get complicated. 
You can also use different colors, you can use different layers, and you can use folders to organize your files and assets. This is also one of the things that is greatly important if you want to learn early on as a beginner, because as a professional, this is a given. For example, if you are creating a large environment with different assets and you are looking for something that is small inside, to try to find it manually, especially if it is a small piece, but if you know your stuff and you name them correctly, you're gonna just search for it and you're gonna find it very easily and very quickly. This is just a quick example to give you an idea. Also, when you try to create something for video games, you need to create low poly and high poly models. And to do the baking process, for example, you need to name every part for the high poly and for the low poly before you export them to a baking software such as Substance Painter. Now, when it comes to starting the modeling process, all the major 3D software have what we call primitive geometry. These are gonna be boxes, cylinders, pyramids, and so on. You're gonna use these as a starting point for your projects. For example, you can create a box and start modeling from there using the box modeling method or polygonal modeling or whatever method you wanna use. Actually, we have created a whole video about this and I recommend taking a look at it. Actually, the modeling process comes to knowing how to manipulate vertices, edges, polygons, in addition to splines and nerves. So it is not that complicated at a basic level. Vertices are just points, edges are just edges, and polygons are just surfaces. You just need to know how to manipulate them the right way. And of course, you need basic knowledge that is going to help you do that. You can find tutorials on YouTube, follow courses, or just learn by yourself, which I don't recommend, because it is just trying to reinvent the wheel, which is stupid. One very important thing you need to use is modifiers. Modifiers are tools that are gonna help you speed up the modeling process because they are automated tools that are gonna help you do certain things very quickly and efficiently. And as a beginner or a professional, you're gonna use these modifiers at different stages of your project. They were developed early on in the 90s and they were very effective tools at getting things done. And they still are a very important part of any 3D modeling program because they are that important and that efficient. Also, one important thing that you need to know is creating clean topology. Clean topology is creating a surface or a mesh that for the most part consists of quads. I mean polygons with four edges. This is important because, first of all, you don't want to make your project a mesh with triangles and guns and a lot of different things at the same time. Also, it's going to make your model look a little bit ugly and not organized, especially when you turn on the wireframe mode on or when you are showing your edges, it's just not going to look good. Also, for other purposes, such as UV wrapping, animation, and many, many other things. To make sure you are doing this correctly, start with something simple, focus during the process, and create something simple like something that you're going to create in just a couple of hours. And to be honest, as you move on and become better, this is going to be more clear to you because you're going to give it more attention over time. Now we're going to talk about UV unwrapping, which is an incredibly important part of any 3D modeling workflow. It is basically the process of bringing your 3D model from being 3D and putting it down onto a flat surface. This is the case because you want to prepare it for the texturing process. You got to separate it to different sections and put it there using some techniques and most certainly following certain rules that are also very important to do certain things in the texturing process and creating maps and stuff. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.